Hey YouTube, it's ICU and welcome to the 106th episode of Best Tech Info and Rumors. All right, so to start off, a lot has happened this week. iOS 6 was released, the iPhone 5 was officially released to the public and is now available for purchase. And because of that, this episode was pushed back two days. It was initially supposed to be released on Friday. However, due to all of the iPhone 5 coverage, again, I did decide to make it today on Sunday instead. So just make sure you guys check out all of my iPhone 5 related videos if you want more information on the device. Again, I did make seven total videos and I will go more into depth on that towards the end of this video. And really quick before the news, I know some of you are actually here to find out who won the giveaway I hosted in collaboration with the members of iPod Uplink. Again, it was a third generation iPad giveaway and the winner was chosen. So for the sake of their privacy, I'm just going to give out their YouTube username, which is 9752088. So congratulations to them on winning the new third generation iPad. Now I am hosting two additional giveaways and I'll discuss those more towards the end of this episode when I also go over the iPhone 5 videos I've released since the last episode of Best Tech and Phone Rumors. All right, now first up in the news, I wanted to discuss jailbreaking. So it's a rather interesting situation we have this time around. First of all, I just wanted to briefly highlight the difference between the two major types of jailbreaks. So on one side we have a tethered jailbreak and on the other side we have an untethered jailbreak. Now the key difference between these two types of jailbreaks is that for a tethered jailbreak it's required to actually plug your device into your computer and rerun a certain part of the utility you use to jailbreak to get it to successfully boot back up. Now this type of jailbreak only works on certain devices as it exploits a hardware based vulnerability which of course as Apple has released new iOS devices over the years has been patched. So the last known and public tethered jailbreak exploit was discovered by Geohot and it's called the LimeRain exploit and it only works on the iPhone 4, the iPhone 3GS, as well as the fourth generation iPod Touch. Now with an untethered jailbreak, you don't have to plug it into your computer to reboot it. You can simply turn it off and then back on. Now of course with the release of every new firmware, it does take the dev team some time to put out an untethered jailbreak utility because they have to test on all the devices, make sure it works properly, and then they can release it. Also, they typically like to make sure that Apple doesn't push out any updates to iOS because unlike tethered exploits, Apple can easily patch untethered exploits with the release of a new firmware. And then once everything's good to go, they will release an untethered jailbreak. So that's essentially the key difference between the two types of jailbreaks. Now, usually, after Apple releases a new firmware, the iPhone dev team is quick to update Red Snow with GeoHot's LimeRain exploit to jailbreak those A4 and earlier devices. However, this time around, things are a little bit different. So the iPhone dev team has yet to update Red Snow to include Cydia support for those devices on iOS 6. However, today I pushed out a tutorial that I was a little hesitant to create at first, primarily because Cydia does have some issues and if it was actually that easy to get on those devices on iOS 6 then the dev team would have released an updated tool by now and in that video I mentioned numerous times that you proceed with caution when actually jailbreaking on iOS 6 with those devices and then from there getting Cydia and I decided to go ahead and create that video for two reasons the first being that the iPhone dev team has yet to update Red Snow and the second being that I've received numerous questions about this jailbreak and about how you actually go about doing it successfully so it's there for you guys if you need to use it as a reference. And now moving on to the iPhone 5 because that was actually jailbroken within 24 hours of the actual device's release. So Grant Paul, better known by Chapone Online, actually jailbroke the iPhone 5 shortly after its release. And he's definitely a credible and contributing hacker and iOS security expert. And in a very quick tweet, he said taller screens like Cydia 2, and he also attached a screenshot of the iPhone 5 with Cydia. And if that's not proof enough, he also pushed out an image of the iPhone 5 with the Cydia app open with the identifier down below at the bottom, confirming that it is indeed the iPhone 5 on iOS 6. And some people were wondering if it's an untethered jailbreak or a tethered jailbreak. Well, as I mentioned earlier, since the Lime Rain exploit was patched quite some time ago, and the last iPhone that it works on is the iPhone 4, it's more likely than not an untethered jailbreak unless the developers have been holding out. Now, as far as a release goes, as I mentioned, it could be quite some time because they want to ensure that they test it on all devices, which of course would presumably include the fifth generation iPod Touch, which is scheduled to be released in October. So with that said, just be sure to stay tuned to this series, Best Tech Info and Rumors, and my YouTube channel in general. I will keep you guys fully updated on the iOS 6 tethered and untethered jailbreak status, as well as the iPhone 5's jailbreak status. 
Now moving right into the news, Samsung actually started a new print ad campaign to basically bash the iPhone and promote their Galaxy S3 as the superior smartphone. Now in the print ad, it's separated into two different columns with different specifications for the iPhone as well as specifications and features of the Galaxy S3. So obviously they misrepresent the iPhone 5 by not including all of the features. However, I'll kind of stay out of this one, leave all of the opinions up to you guys. You can just let me know down below in the comment section or on Best Tech Info. Next, based on a benchmark score before the iPhone 5 was actually released using Geekbench, it was determined that the A6 processor, which powers the device, can outperform quad-core processor smartphones. Now, a lot of people asked, how is this possible? Well, there are a lot of different contributing factors. Now, one of the key things, obviously, is how much system resources the operating system takes up iOS versus Android or the operating system that other smartphones run on. And while that's just one factor, there are actually many as to why the A6 chip performs so well. And in related news, when the SunSpider JavaScript test was run on the iPhone 5, it was determined that that is the fastest performing or the best performing smartphone to ever run the test. Next up, Apple released a statement confirming sales figures for the iPhone 5, which over 2 million units were pre-ordered in just 24 hours. And based on those figures, it's predicted that Apple will sell a total of 8 million additional iPhone 5s this weekend, which as many of you know, is the weekend following the iPhone 5's official Friday, September 21st launch date. Now moving on to a topic that's somewhat related, Apple's stock surpassed $700 per share following the news of how many pre-orders they sold. And as an interesting fact, now that Apple is evaluated at over $650 billion, their net worth exceeds that of ExxonMobil, which is the second most valuable company, combined with Google's net worth. Next up, in a new and detailed teardown from iSupply, parts and the manufacturing cost for Apple's iPhone 5 is estimated to start at $207 per unit. So with this year's iPhone and all of its improvements, it's speculated to cost roughly the same as the iPhone iPhone 4S costs to manufacture. And if you guys want to see how that's possible, just be sure to check out that post. And on the 20th, a day before the iPhone 5 was officially released, a quick teardown was performed by iPhone Garage. So just be sure to check that out if you guys are interested. All right, and finally, before getting into the giveaways, I just wanted to let you know which videos I've posted related to the iPhone 5 since the last episode of Best Tech and Phone Rumors. So first starting in order, I created an unboxing video of Apple's new EarPods. Next was how to track your iPhone 5 order without a tracking number, even if it says preparing for shipment on Apple's website. I also created two unboxing videos, one of the white iPhone 5 and the other of the black iPhone 5. Now the reason why I did this is because UPS actually held my black iPhone 5, so I went to AT&T really quick to pick up another one for somebody else. So I just did an unboxing of the white model and a couple other videos until I was able to get mine. I also put together a 4G LTE iPhone 5 speed test and a new lightning connector speed test video as well. And in that I kind of just go over and summarize the lightning connector and compare its transfer speeds to that of the 30 pin connector which was previously used in all iPhone models up until the iPhone 5. And finally, last night I actually posted a in-depth iPhone 5 review video that was actually filmed with the white iPhone 5 I had previously unboxed. So if you guys want to see any of those videos just check down below. I'll have a link to a post on my website with complete details. And finally to discuss the two giveaways I'm holding. First is the Kindle Fire. Yes, just the original Kindle Fire. I decided it was time to retire my unit, which was just used to create a few videos on my channel. So if you're interested in winning a seven inch Kindle Fire tablet, just be sure to be subscribed to my channel. Of course, like my videos and leave a comment down below in the comment section and you will be entered. Now for the Kindle Fire giveaway, you will have to include the tag iPhone 5 space Kindle Fire giveaway, and that part's all one word. So if you're confused, just be sure to go to the post that details that giveaway. Also, the keyword that you have to use to enter is on the screen now. And the next giveaway, which I'm actually starting right now, is a giveaway of the new fifth generation iPod Touch. And to enter this giveaway, again, it's very similar to the Kindle Fire giveaway. You have to be subscribed, of course, and then you have to like videos and leave a comment down below in the comment section to gain an entry. And the tag that you have to use for this giveaway is simply iPod Touch 5 G ICU. And that tag, of course, has spaces between all of the words and it's on the screen now. Now for the question of the day, what do you guys think about the iPhone 5 now that it's been publicly released? Have your opinions changed? Just anything related to the iPhone 5 you can leave down below 
or on best tech info. Also, don't forget to rate this video up if you liked it, hit that subscribe button to be notified every time I release new videos, and to be updated more often, just be sure to like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, and add me to one of your circles inside of Google+. And until next time, this is ICU, signing out.